<laughs> sexual follies. All right. Mark Regners is an associate professor of sociology at the University of Texas at Austin, and he has written a very powerful book called Cheap Sex, The Transformation of Men, Marriage, and Monogamy. Mark, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Drew. Happy to be here. Uh, let's start with what what this is, what makes sex cheap. What does that mean? What does that phrase mean? Well, cheap sex means that it's easier for men to access sex of some sort than ever before in human history. So we think about uh, not just coupled sex, but you know, sexual experiences. You know, as we were just talking about, you know, pornography and things that they can access by themselves of a higher quality, of course, than you know your grandfather's Playboy calendar in the garage. Right. So right. it's about ease of sexual access or access to. The desirable sexual experiences. That's what cheap sex is. Okay, and that's been increasing since certainly since I was a kid when the sexual sure. revolution yeah. began, and it's, it's gotten to very extensive at this point. Right. What, it really launches in some ways with the advent of the pill, right? Because that's yeah. the thing that sinks the cost of sex. So I, I, I always call it a grand bargain. She gets control of fertility in exchange. He got control of the pace at which the relationship became sexual. Such that today, as I said in the Wall Street Journal, like uh, it, it, the modal time at which a relationship becomes sexual is now before it even starts, right? So it's not after a few dates, after uh, a couple months of courting. It's like before we even begin. Well, because now, obviously, the girl doesn't have the excuse of, oh, I might get pregnant. She doesn't have right. the uh, religious excuse because their relig a lot of religion is gone. So there's no barrier. So what's the result? What is the societal result? And, and how, did, how did you study this and what did you find? Sure. sure. Well, I'll get to the how did I study it in a second. But okay. one of the results is like the road to stable, committed relationships, including but not only marriage, is, is a lot longer, right? And a lot more sort of boulder strewn, especially for women who would prefer a higher price for sex, right? I mean, they actually enjoy sex more when it's in a committed relationship than when it's not. Of so, course, yeah. Which isn't that shocking. But I mean, as these things evolve, right? I think, um, you know, we shouldn't expect marriage rates to curve back around and, and, and increase. They're, they're decreasing. They've been decreasing since 1970, and I don't see it coming back. You know, uh, well, one of the things that you, in this Wall Street Journal piece, you quote a 24-year-old uh, recent college graduate, and he says, girls are mis easier to mislead than guys just by lying or just not really caring. If you know what girls want, then you know you should not give, give that to them until the proper time. If you do that strategically, then you can really have anything you want, whether it's relationship, sex, or whatever. You have the control. I mean, that, I, I think there have been guys who have felt that all through history, but that kid sounds like he's just right. uh, on easy street, basically. Right. I mean, there have been people who have felt that all through history, but they've been really at the, the elite level. Now, one of the things I'm saying is this is kind of democratized, right? Hmm. The average man can experience this. It's not just Harvey Weinstein uh, or the other producers we're talking about. I mean, it's the average guy, and he doesn't even have to be a college graduate anymore. I mean, hmm. the frequency of sex is higher, actually, uh, among people who haven't graduated college than those who have. Maybe it's because we're working too much. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, well, that's actually, of sexual access is 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 widespread. Th that's a, another question I wanted to ask you. You know, Charles Murray has said that basically, uh, as you go up the class ladder, people get married more. They go to church more. They work harder. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, so when you say marriage is falling apart, do you mean across the spectrum, or or right. is it only in the lower? Yeah, class? marriage is uh, it's receding more slowly among the college educated. I mean, people want to marry. Men want to marry too, eventually, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, but it's receding more at the, you know, the working class level. Now, why? Because, well, marriageability is about productivity and proving yourself, being able to generate an income. And, and that doesn't even, that doesn't change, even though women no longer really need the men's income quite the same way they used to. Uh, but what you're seeing is working class men being slow to marry, being women considering them not so marriageable, but they still have sexual access. So at some level, it's like, well, hey, 
this isn't so bad. Right? <laughs> so so Whereas, why do I have, yeah. Decades ago, that would not have been the case. I mean, if they were flirting with sex, she would get pregnant, you have the shotgun wedding, and, you know, they may not be the happiest, but, you know, that's your grandparents, right? Right, right. And, and, and so, what, so what you're saying is a man has no uh, sexual reason to build himself into anything better than he is. He doesn't have to improve himself that's at all. That's the correct yep. So here's, here's another angle from, the, from this. Is it possible that marriage itself has become less appealing to men because they get less out of it? I mean, setting the sex aside sure. uh, with feminism, if your wife is working out of the home, there's nobody there to raise your children. There's nobody there to build a home for you, which, uh, you know, I think is a, a real advantage to have someone to make a home for you. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. If it has, and your children only cost you money. They don't come back and work on the farm. They go right. off into the world. Right. So you don't see that any part, return on your investment. That part ended with the Industrial Revolution. Um, right. So there's this movement, people talk about men going their own way, and people will respond to the, the Wall Street Journal article and say, Mark, you're out to lunch. It's because marriage is a bad deal for men. I, I don't see evidence of men, especially in their 20s and early 30s, saying marriage is a bad deal. I'm not going to do it ever. I mean, they might, if they're wealthy enough, they might add in some, a clause into the, the, the marriage. But um, I don't see them fleeing marriage at the front end. What I do see is evidence at the back end, having been burned, looking back and saying, oh, I should have seen this, right? Mm. The, it, the deck is stacked against me. She can take my children. I can't see them when I want to. So I think that the, the men going their own way thing is more of a reflection, you know, looking back than a, a characteristic of men in the 20s and 30s. Because Kevin's says, I still want to get married. I just want, you know, I just don't want to have sex with a million girls first and make a lot of mistakes. Right, right. Now, given the fact that, uh, you know, every day I read the paper that they're making better and more realistic sex robots and, you know, porn is going to become 3D. I'm sure as soon as they have that that Oculus really working, the first thing they're going to put on it is porn. Is, exactly. Do you see this? Do you see this trend reversing? Is there you see any way to make this trend reverse? Uh. No, I don't see it reversing. Um, I don't quite know how much the robot thing will uh, replace sex. Mm. The deal is, like, women are have begun to make deals with men over pornography and probably soon over the, the robot thing, uh, in, in part because they feel like they have to. I mean, mm. women really feel like they're in a bind. Darned if they do, darned if they don't. If they leave this man who has this problem, will they, you know, is the grass truly greener on the other side of the fence? Uh, and I think they, they're finding themselves puzzled about whether they can truly get away from sort of the pornified society. But as you say, you're right. I mean, as soon as uh, we create new technology, that's the first thing men seem to, to do with it, right? Of course. So <laughs> will it replace marriage? I mean, at some level, no. Marriage is, is robust. It's not going to die. I think it's going to recede, though. And it's going to be characteristic of more religious communities. Uh, more conservative men. I mean, and and men who, together with their wives, sort of work through the temptations that are are ever present. Uh, you, you know, I have to ask you this before I let you go because I'm I'm really always interested about the way these studies are done. And you've you've come under heavy fire from uh, the the left. I mean, I, what you've, a you've I mean, you've you've come under some of the worst fire I've ever seen, actually, from the left for a study you did saying that uh, the ch children raised by gay couples are more likely to commit suicide or something. I, I believe that was the it's study. A little bit more subtle than that, uh, okay. but that was the study you're thinking. Worst about, yes. outcomes, let's say. <laughs> do you, do you feel confident? That, that you are getting a, a, broad, a broad enough spectrum of people. I mean, that's what they always accuse you of, right? You haven't gotten a broad spectrum. You haven't got that. It, do you feel confident that you're getting a broad enough spectrum to really have a picture of society? I do. Be, uh, far more confident than this, uh, because this is a, a large study, 15,000 plus people in mm. the survey, 100 interviews, whereas the study that you had mentioned before, I mean, it was the first randomly collected data set of its kind, and we right. had... 248 cases on a survey of uh, young adults who had, had a mother or a father who had been in a same-sex relationship at some point, right? Uh -huh. Not re necessarily raised by a gay couple, but you had a father or mother who had been in a relationship. So this one is, uh, those were like searching for needles in a haystack, right? This is a general population survey. This is average men and women we're talking about. I'm very confident in it. 
And and so do, do people you expect to be attacked again? I mean, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Do you just doing this kind oh, yeah. of research? Does that open you up to attack? Happened already. <laughs> the funny it? thing is, it, it it comes from both sides. Men think I'm accusing them of you know being blokes and uh, just sort of uh, all they're interested in is sex. Women think I'm misogynistic uh, to suggest that somehow uh, they have to sort of trade sex for resources with men. I mean, I just I just think this is. You know, this is how men and women relate to each other. And so it's coming from both angles. It's coming from scholars, although smart scholars will recognize and have already done so uh, that there's some truth into this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark Regnerus, the book is called Cheap Sex, The Transformation of Men, Marriage and Monogamy. Thanks very much for coming on. I appreciate it. It's an interesting conversation. Welcome, appreciate it. All right. We are out of time, I think, you know, but the mailbag is tomorrow. And all your, I mean, come on, look in the mirror, Thanks. look at your life. <laughs> I think I, I'll say no more. My name is Andrew Claven. This is The Andrew Claven Show. We will see you again tomorrow.